morning and praise the name of the Lord. My name is Jotham Kilimo, by grace a canon in the Anglican Diocese of All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi. This morning our sign language interpreter is Rosalind Njuguna. Let us start with a word of prayer. Our gracious and loving Father, we thank you for the gift of life this day. We pray that as we meditate on your word, that you'll open our hearts and that we'll receive your word and not just receive it, but act on it. All to your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So friends, this week we have been reflecting on our spiritual position in Christ. We started by reflecting on our spiritual possessions in Christ, which are given by God's grace for the praise of his glory that makes us his possessions. And then yesterday, we reflected on our spiritual position seated with Christ and learned that this means we are not of the world, that we belong in heaven, and that we are made to do good things. So today, we'll wrap up our spiritual position reflections by looking at spiritual position reconciled with Christ. And we shall base this on Ephesians chapter 2, beginning to read from verse 11. Ephesians 2, beginning to read from verse 11. Therefore, remember that formerly you were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who called themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at the time you were separ separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who are once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death the hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Now Paul reminds the Ephesian believers, like in the previous section that we read yesterday, that they were formerly Gentiles by birth and circumcised, separate with Christ, excluded from Israel, foreigners to the covenants of promise and without hope. Again, focus on the former. Verse 13, then Paul says, but, again that key word, but, shifting ch positions, changing the view. But now, in Christ, they have been brought near through his blood. Jews and Gentiles, who are separated by hostility and a barrier, are now reconciled to God through the cross, by which the hostility was put to death. So what is the meaning of reconciliation? Reconciliation involves a change in the relationship in this context between God and man, but also between man and man. It assumes there has been a breakdown in the relationship, but now there's been a change from a state of enmity and fragmentation to one of harmony and fellowship. And so we see here in reconciliation, the key words are change and also exchange. So we can pick two truths from this 
passage. Number one is that Christ reconciled us to God through his death on the cross. Christ reconciled us to God through his death on the cross. And this is uh, born, carried in verse 16. So instead of punishing us with death, which we deserved, Christ took our sins upon himself, took also our punishment of death, which is the wages of sin, by dying on the cross. So through faith in Christ's work on the cross, we, you and me, are reconciled to God. And you can read about this in Romans chapter 5, verse 10 and 11. And this gives us a new spiritual position, being close to or being reconciled to God and not being enemies and outcasts. So we have moved from being enemies and outcasts but being close and reconciled to God. And this happened at the cross where an exchange was made to all who believe. Our sin was exchanged for his righteousness. Our sin was poured into Christ at his crucifixion and his righteousness is poured into us at our conversion. God now sees us through Christ's righteousness. Our state changed from being far away, separated, excluded from God, without hope, to being near to God, to having peace, and to have access to God the Father through his spirit. That is our new status, our new position. We are then no longer aliens or foreigners or strangers, but are now fellow citizens in God's household. All this through the blood of Christ that was shed on the cross at Calvary. The power of the cross of Christ gave us a new spiritual position. Sins forgiven, reconciled with God. So that's the first truth, that Christ reconciled us to God through his death on the cross. The second truth is that relationships with other Christians are also reconciled. Relationships with other Christians are also reconciled. So first, reconciled to God, the next, we now reconciled with each other. So by his death, Christ ended the angry resentment between the Jews and the Gentiles, as Paul writes there. And this was primarily caused by the Jewish laws, which excluded uh, the Gentiles. But now, because of Christ dying on the cross, they have now become one. And so, for us today, our spiritual position of being reconciled with Christ should cause us to be reconciled with other Christians. Christ has brought us peace with God and also brought us peace with one another. Christ has brought us peace, one believer to another, whether it is in the family or it is at work or in the community. People ought to see that God is love and that Christ is Lord in our lives as we live in harmony with each other. We are citizens of God's kingdom and we are members of his holy household. But the reconciliation is not only between individual Christians, but it's also with the fellow group of Christians or the church. The church is built upon Christ. Christ is the cornerstone on the foundation of the message from the apostles and the prophets. Jesus is our peacemaker. He has brought peace and reconciliation by joining all of us Christians together into one structure that we are calling the church. And it's universal and it contains all the consecrated people. All of us have been made holy as it is written from verse 21 to 22 
that in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. One Christ, one sacrifice, one church is what Paul is writing to the Ephesians and writing to us. And therefore, we are, our relationship with one another as Christians, our relationship as members of the body of Christ needs to be reconciled so that God's name will be glorified. Have you experienced the power of the cross of Christ? Have you received forgiveness of your sins? Are you reconciled with God? Do you have inheritance of eternal life? What do you need or who do you need to be reconciled with? Is it your spouse? Is it your child? Is it your parent or a member of your family? Is it a pastor, somebody in church, or a business partner, or a workmate, or even a neighbor? Who is it that you need to reconcile with? And as the Lord brings this name, that person or those people to your mind, would you be obedient and reach out in the power of the cross for healing and reconciliation with that person? We're not just reconciled to God, but all believers are reconciled to each other as well. The shed blood of Jesus Christ not only joins us to God, but joins every Christian to every other saint. The cross of Christ reconciles sinners to God, but also with one another. And the church, which is the holy temple of God, should be then a living testimony to that reconciliation which God has accomplished through the cross. So I urge you, brothers and sisters, that even as you are reconciled to God through the power of the cross, through the shed blood of Christ, make every effort to be reconciled to fellow believers, to fellow Christians, so that our church, the holy temple of God, will be holy all to his glory and honor. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, that through his suffering on the cross and through his shed blood, we are reconciled to you. And not just reconciled to you, but also reconciled to fellow believers. Father, I pray that you'll empower your children, those who are seeking reconciliation, to be reconciled one to another, to be healed all to the glory of your name. Strengthen your people, Lord, in the church, in the body of Christ worldwide, to love and to serve you, and in the unity brought by the Spirit, that your name will be glorified because the church is one. I pray for each one of us this day that you'll guide us, walk with us today, sanctify us, protect us by the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and make us successful all to your glory and honor. I pray this in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.